Welcome everyone to the Park Forum once again. Uh, my name is Ed Chi. I'm the area manager for a group called Augmented Social Cognition that is looking into a lot of Web 2.0 research here at Park. Uh, today's forum is the fourth talk in our special speaker theory called uh, Going Beyond uh, Web 2.0, The Power of the Web for Connecting People, Collaborative Co-Creating the Knowledge, Enabling Enterprises to Use Social Softwares Effectively, and so on and so forth. And uh, before I introduce today's speaker, uh, I just wanted to let you know that the previous talks of this special speaker series are now available on our online website at uh, uh, park.com slash form. And that will include a kickoff talk from uh, notable speaker Ross Mayfield of Social Text, who spoke about all things Web 2.0 and sort of the meta things that are happening around there. And then the week after that, we had Garrett Camp from StumbleUpon, you know, someone who was down in the trenches, actually created a Web 2.0 company and had it uh, acquired by eBay. And uh, so the, these form talks are usually posted online after a few days. Uh, and, and just like this one, will be available in a few days as well. So, and after today's uh, form talk, we'll be taking a break because of the holidays. And so the next uh, park form will not be until January 10th with Bernardo Huberman, who used to be a park scientist here. And he's going to be talking about social dynamics in the age of the web. And again, that will be on January 10th. And after that, we'll have a long list of very notable speakers that I'm sure you will be interested in, including uh, Chris Anderson, the author of The Long Tail, uh, Fernanda Villegas and Martin Wittenberg from IBM, who's building a very interesting website called Many Eyes, and as well as uh, people from Kiva.org, a very interesting uh, 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 charity-based uh, organization up in San Francisco, doing uh, Web 2.0 kinds of uh, connecting people. And then Andrew McAfee from Harvard Business School, uh, Business School will be here talking about Enterprise 2.0. So it's going to be a very interesting speaker series. Um, one of the things that we've tried to do with this series is to get different perspectives, as you have uh, just heard. You know, so we, we first had the, the Ross Mayfield's perspective, and then we have the trenches, and then now here we have today we have Guy Kawasaki, who's going to be talking to us about uh, the viewpoint for our venture capitalist and uh, also someone who's actually doing a startup uh, perspective. Um, Guy Kawasaki is the co-founder of Trumers. If you haven't been on the website, I urge you to check it out right now. Uh, the managing director uh, of Garage Technology Venture, he's very well known for that. And before that, um, he was actually an Apple fellow at the Apple Computers. Um, Guy is the author of eight books. I don't know how above all the things that he does already, <laughs> he has the time to, uh, to, to write eight books, but that includes uh, titles such as The Art of the Start, Rules of, for the Revolutionaries, How to Drive Your Competitors Crazy, et cetera, et cetera. He has a BA from Stanford University, an MBA from UCLA, as well as an honorary doctorate degree from uh, Bobson College. So Guy is going to tell us a little bit about how he built a Web 2.0 user-generated content citizen journalism long-tail social media site for $12,107.09. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, to answer your question, Ed, the, the reason or the, the, the way that I can write eight books is that really I've written one book eight times, <laughs> which is very different than writing eight different books. Uh, I'm here today to talk to you about how I started a company called Trumers uh, for about $12,000. Uh, I'm not really here to tell you, you know, to use Trumers or anything like that. It's just an illustrative example of what can be done these days with $12,000. So if you don't mind, I'm going to give you a, a little bit of tour. I'll give you a little background of the company. And then I have a PowerPoint presentation that explains uh, exactly how I did it. Um, and I hope you, what you take from this presentation is that uh, it's a very good time to be an entrepreneur right now because things are, have gotten so cheap to do. Okay? So um, I start off my presentation with this page. Uh, you may be wondering, what the hell is that page doing up here? Uh, about nine months ago, I moderated a panel at Stanford. And on this panel was the person who started this company, Hot or Not. His name is James Hong. And he told the story of how uh, he and his roommate came home from a party one night 
and they got into a discussion about whether a particular girl was hot or not. And so they thought, oh, you know, we're having this very interesting discussion about whether she was hot or not. Maybe other people would like to join in this conversation. Maybe other people would like to rate whether women are good looking or not. So they created this site called Hot or Not, and basically people upload pictures and then the world votes whether this woman or this man is good looking or not. And uh, he said that they started off by sending out 40 emails one weekend, and those 40 emails generated 40,000 visitors to the site uh, over the weekend. And uh, today, this company has about, I think, six employees, and they do more than $10 million worth of advertising. So, you know, I heard that story, and I said, well, you know, what am I missing? Um, <laughs> There's no enterprise, scalable, you know, there's no patent pending, curve jumping, paradigm shifting, nothing there. They're like <laughs> letting people put pictures up and letting other people vote on those pictures. And then they sell advertising for that. I mean, I love that business model. So uh, the other person on this panel was a guy who started this company called Plenty of Fish. This is a free dating site. Uh, it's operated out of Canada. It's basically one guy sitting in his underwear who wanted to study .NET and learn .NET, so he started writing um, software and he created a free dating website. And now this thing gets about 500 million visitors a month. Excuse me, 500 million page views a month. 500 million page views a month. One guy sitting in his underwear working in Vancouver. Okay, 500 million page views a month. So he too was on the panel. He is doing about $10 million by himself. So then the next person on this panel was a guy named Drew Curtis, and he has a website called FARC. And all FARC does is they have these people who go out and they read all these publications around the internet and they look for funny stories. And so here's a funny story at TheExaminer.com, charges dropped in a brutal snowball attack, okay? And that's all. All he has done is written the words, charges dropped in brutal snowball attack. And then when you click on this, you get taken to the actual website where that story is hosted, okay? So he, he does this um, a few times a day. and. People read all these funny things and they click through it and he gets about 50 million page views a month. He too does several million dollars worth of advertising. It's himself, he's sitting in Louisville, Kentucky. He has these four people who are sort of the farkers and they go and find these funny stories. So I hear these four stories, you know, the, the guy at Fark, the guy at Plenty of Fish, the guy at Hot or Not, and I'm thinking to myself, why am I working so hard? You know, why am I listening to 50 pitches a week? Why am I dealing with all these entrepreneurs who are driving me crazy? I should just find an idea like that. And so that was the genesis of Drumers. I moderated this panel. I heard about how these people were creating this site, these sites um, without sort of the seeming higher calling. And uh, that's what started me thinking there must be a better way. So, uh, so that, that was one sort of train of thought. The second train of thought is, of course, I work for Apple. And at Apple, the, the core of Apple is all about democratization. So we tried to democratize computing power. You know, basically, we took what you invented and <laughs> took it out to the masses. Um, you know, even that, though, you, know, you have to admit that um, I don't think there's any question that we were inspired or stole your ideas. Uh, Having said that, you do need to know what to steal. You know, it takes, a, you know what I'm saying? You could break into somebody's house and steal the pillows, you know, uh, instead of stealing the high definition TV. So it takes an element of taste to know what to steal. Um, so, at least, you know, that's a way of me flattering you, I guess. So, so the Apple computer stands for the democratization, and one of the things that I'd like to help democratize is information. So in my sort of slanted view of the world, 
way back when there were royalty and there was the Pope and they had scribes. And these scribes, uh, if you were filthy rich or if you were the Pope, you had people who could transcribe the Bible for you, right? So it wasn't very democratic. You had to be the Pope or you had to be royalty. Uh, fast forward a few hundred years and Gutenberg puts together this thing called the printing press and now, you know, more people can print Bibles and more people can read Bibles. So it got a lot more democratized. Fast forward a few more years, and then there's PostScript from Adobe, there's PageMaker from Aldis, there's Laser Printer from, you know, Apple via Park, and <laughs> we're seeing a theme here, and, and there's Macintosh, right, also via Park. And so now it got a lot more democratized. With desktop publishing, you needed about $10,000 worth of equipment, and you too could be in the information business. You didn't have to be the New York Times. You didn't have to be the San Francisco Examiner. All you needed was a Macintosh, PageMaker, and a laser printer. Fast forward a few more years, and now all you had to do was own a website. Not bad. Now you didn't even have to buy a Macintosh. Um, then fast forward a few more years, and now all you had to do was write a blog. And with a blog, and either on a free platform or something like TypePad, which is 10 bucks a month, you too could spread information. But even at the height of this democracy, where you had to own a website or run a blog, you still had to own a website or run a blog. And it's not clear that people could consistently come up with information that would keep driving traffic back to those sites. So I wanted to democratize information a little further, which is to say that I wanted to allow anybody to post any information to a website that thousands of people would read. So we started Trumers with the goal of truly democratizing information, where you could post information via an online form, via voicemail, via email, um, so that you could tell the world, literally tell the world. That was our, our, our slogan. So that's the background of Trumers. Now let me go through the PowerPoint presentation um, before I do a demo of Trumers. And I did this, this is what it's called, How I Built the Web 2.0 User-Generated Content Citizen Journalism Long Tail Social Media Site for $12,107.09. Now, the first thing I want to tell you about this title is that there are some people who are just so clueless that I have given this presentation and they write to me later and they say, you know, guy, you really use too many buzzwords in your title. <laughs> <laughs> to which my response is, no shit. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you, as a venture capitalist, you know, for every buzzword you use, we give you about a $1 million pre-money valuation. <laughs> so Web 2.0 is a million, user generated is a million, citizen journalism is a million, long tail is a million, social media is a million. So there's a $5 million pre-money valuation company <laughs> right here. So just for those of you who thought I was serious and I, you know, didn't know I was using too many buzzwords, tr trust me, I do know. Um, Okay, so the first number is zero. Zero pertains to the number of business plans that we wrote for Trumers. Absolutely zippo. You know, when you start a company for 12 grand, you don't need to write a business plan. <laughs> the next number is also zero. Zero pertains to the number of pitches we made to venture capitalists. Again, when you start a company for 12 grand and it's off your credit card or your speaking fees, you don't need to suck up to a venture capitalist. You don't need to write a business plan. You can just go for it. Life is good. <laughs> Seven and a half. Seven and a half is the number of weeks from the time I registered the Trumers domain to the time we shipped. I really think that five or six years ago, if I were to try to build a website like Trumers, it would have taken two or three programmers a year. Um, and you probably would have had to raise at least a million dollars. But because of MySQL and open source this and WordPress that and everything, boy, you know, really in seven and a half weeks, you can come up with a pretty interesting website and with $12,000, obviously. So the next number is $4,500. $4,500 is the cost of the software development. Um, I offshored the development of Trumers to a foreign country, i.e. Um, South Dakota. Um, I found a company called Electric Pulp, and this is a website development company, WordPress company, PHP kind of company, 
and uh, they did all of the software for version one of, of Trumers for 4,500 bucks. Now, if I were a programmer, this would be zero. So I could have started Trumers for $4,500 less if I could have written the software myself. So, uh, but you know, I think the, the major message here is taking the startup of something like Trumers from 1 million to 12,000, that's what's interesting. Not that I could have taken it from 1 million to 8,000. The last 4,000 is neither here nor there. It's the first, you know, 988,000 that makes it interesting. Um, the second number is $4,824.13. Believe it or not, I spent this amount, which is more than the cost of the software development, on legal fees. Uh, basically, I set up a new company. I had to have you know, all the, the documents, all the shareholder agreements, uh, a lot of trademark work, and a lot of libel work because um, when we started Trumers, it was unmoderated. You know, anybody could post anything. So we were very afraid that someone would say, you know, Johnny is a cocaine addict who cheats on his tests and beats his wife and, you know, whatever. So we had to investigate the, the legalities of libel and slander for such a democratized website. So 4,800 bucks. Um, lots of people have also written me and said, you know, guy, you are so stupid. 4,800 bucks, you could have bought a Nolo Press book and done it for five bucks. <laughs> or my uncle, the divorce lawyer, would have done it for 500 bucks. Uh, to which my response is, you're an idiot. Um, <laughs> uh, basically, if you were to go down the street and ask Wilson Sonsini to incorporate you, do the libel and trademark work, trust me, it would cost much more than 5,000 bucks. So the thinking was, yes, I could have done it. I could have done it with Nolo Press. I could have incorporated it. I could have asked my uncle, the divorce lawyer, to do it. Um, yes, I could have done this much cheaper. But if Trumers becomes a success and it is acquired, uh, I don't want to have to undo all the divorce lawyer legal work. I don't want to have to show them, oh, yeah, here's my letters of incorporation, uh, my document of incorporation. I tore it out of Nolo Press. Um, that is not going to impress anybody. So five grand, you know, do it right. Uh, the next number is $399. $399 is the cost that, uh, of this logo. Now, some of you may say, that looks like a $400 logo. Uh, <laughs> To which I say, you know, <laughs> tough. Um, at, you know, simultaneously, when we were designing this logo, I remember that the London Olympic Committee announced their logo. How many of you have seen the London Olymp Summer Olympics logo? OK, it is the butt ugliest thing in the world. I mean, it, 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 it would be an insult to Nazis to say that the London Olympic logo looks like a swastika deconstructed. Um, <laughs> And that logo, that logo literally cost $400,000. So I looked at that logo for 400 grand, and I looked at my logo for $400, and I said, wow, this is a great logo. <laughs> uh, for those of you who want to know how you get a $400 logo, uh, you go to LogoWorks, and you type in a little creative brief. Um, this is a company that's going to democratize information. We like sans serif fonts. Uh, we like, you know, you know, whatever. We like the colors black and yellow. Our, our slogan is going to be tell the world uh, because it is about spreading information. Maybe a bubble, conversational bubble, like a comic bubble would be interesting. So you type a creative brief like that. And four or five graphic designers, freelancers, submit their examples. You pick one. You go through a few iterations of, you know, I don't like the type typography. I don't like the color. Make the... Make the doohickey, the little, the little tail, point to the right, point to the left, all that kind of stuff. You go through a few permutations. And at the end of the day, you pay them 400 bucks, and you get a logo. Life is good. Life is good. Um, the next number is $1,115.05. This $1,100 is what I spent registering domains. So I spent $1,100 registering domains. The next number is 55. Um, the reason why it costs so much is that's the number of total domains that I registered. Now, you can quickly do the math. 55 domains for uh, $1,100, roughly 20 bucks a domain. Uh, I did it at Network Solutions. It could have been done much cheaper at GoDaddy. Yeah. Honestly, I could have taken this down from $1,100 to maybe 400 
you know, something like that. But again, you know, it was 1100 versus 400. It's, you know, it's 800 bucks difference. I already had an account set up at Network Solutions. Um, I, I thought that the use of the uh, the GoDaddy Super Bowl commercial, where the the woman has her breasts falling off of her dress at the congressional hearing, I thought that was sexist. So I didn't want to support GoDaddy in their sexist de depiction of women. So I used Network Solutions, and I paid 800 bucks more. So what, right? Now. Lots of people have said, God, you are so clueless. Why would you register 55 domains? I mean, and, and there's two reasons. One is, trumors happens to be a word that is, could be spelled in so many ways, right? T-R-U-E-M-O-R-S, T-R-U-M-O-R-S, T-R-U-E-M-O-U-R-S, if you're from the UK, T-R-U-M-O-U-R-S. Then there's the dot D-E, the dot E-U, the dot C-A, the dot TV, the dot US, the dot whatever. So trust me, at the end of the day, it was 55. Now, could I have done 40? Yes. Could I have done 10? Probably. But again, the order of magnitude is the total thing was 1,100 bucks. So if Trumers become successful and someday somebody is squatting on T-R-U-E-M-O-U-R-S and I need to get that squatter off that, I know that the legal fees would be about 25,000 bucks. So you know, to evict one squatter is 25,000 bucks, or to own every possible permutation I could think that's worth squatting on is 1,100 bucks? Why not, right? 1,100 bucks, what the hell? Um, one and a half, one and a half is the basic number of full-time equivalent employees we have on Trumers. It's myself and my partner. This for me is a labor of love. Um, you know, someday if I'm selling $5 million worth of advertising from this site, hallelujah, you know? I'll never give a speech again. I'll never, I'll never get on an airplane again. And some other entrepreneur will come in here and say, I heard Guy Kawasaki talk, and he said he did Trumers, and he does $5 million a year sitting in his underwear, reading stories all day. He's my hero, and that's why I started this. That's the goal, OK? I know this is not going to be you know, more valuable than Google. Trust me, I know that already. Um, but I, I, am, I am 53 years old. I don't want to start the next Google. I mean, I'd like to fund the next Google. I don't want to start the next Google. Uh, I have four children. I want to be at home. That's, you know, for better or for worse, that's my perspective. Three refers to the number of times TechCrunch wrote about rumors. How many of you read TechCrunch regularly? No, oh, OK. So you know, the thing about getting in TechCrunch is if you get on TechCrunch the first day, roughly, 50 or 60,000 people visit your website, they crush you, right? So it goes from 50,000 the first day to 15,000 the second day to 3,000 the third day to back to where you were, <laughs> you know, 500 the fourth day. Um, but trust me when I tell you that most people love to be on TechCrunch because it immediately creates 100,000 people or 50,000 people who know about you who didn't know about you the day before. So it's a good thing. So most PR and marketing people dream about being on TechCrunch once. We were on three times. Uh, we were on for the leak, the leak with the screen dump, and then the official announcement. And uh, lots of people have thought that this is sheer marketing genius on my behalf. I'll tell you, it was just pure dumb luck. Uh, I did not intend for the two leaks to happen. Having said that, I didn't stop them either. Um, but. Uh, so three, three TechCrunch is probably the record for, for leaks. Uh, 261,214, that's the number of page views that we had on the first day. Trust me, we did get crushed. Um, 14,052 is the number of visitors we had on the first day. Zero dollars is how much I spent on the marketing budget. Literally, Trumers was, mar was introduced with no marketing expenditure, not one cent. I called in a lot of favors. Uh, I know Michael Arrington. I know many bloggers. Um, I know many press people. And I, I, I am very visible. So anything I did at that point would have gotten a lot of coverage. So I spent zero, z literally zero marketing Trumers. Um, lots of people have remarked that this is patently unfair, that I go about 
you know, talking about how I started Troopers for 12 grand, but you know, guy, you have an unfair advantage because you're guy, no, everybody knows you, everybody would write about you, you know, blah, blah, blah. So it's not fair, you're uh, unrealistically setting ex people's expectations to be able to do Web 2.0 websites much cheaper, blah, blah, blah. This is my answer, 24. 24 is the number of years I spent <laughs> working in this valley so that I could launch for zero. <laughs> and in those 24 years, starting at my, my work at Apple, I have done a lot of people favors. I have given lots of people stories. I've given lots of people leaks. I've done a lot of things. And so it was payback time, baby. And that's, that's why. So people say you spent nothing, but I say I spent 24 years. That's the way I look at it. Um, 405. 405 is the number of trumers posted on the first day. So 405 people or, you know, 400, some number of people posted 405 stories the first day. Um, the interesting thing that is that 218 of these were basically junk, spam, inappropriate, whatever. <laughs> you know, we, we told the world that anybody can post anything via online form, email, voicemail, or text message, right? So a lot of people wanted to see if this were true. So a lot of these messages, you know, roughly 218, all they said was vagina, 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 <laughs> or penis, 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 or shit, shit, shit. They just wanted to see, is it true that a message would immediately appear there? And it, it obviously was true. So, um, you know, the interesting thing is we allowed all those messages to get posted, but we deleted them, right? So half of the blogosphere said this, this Trumers is a piece of crap because there's nothing but profanity and spam there, right? Zero content. That's half the blogosphere. Then we erased all the crap. The other half of the blogosphere says guy is censoring. <laughs> <laughs> to which my response is, yes, I am censoring. I am deleting crap. So it was a very interesting day. Uh, three, three is the number of hours before the site was hacked. <laughs> three hours after TechCrunch announced it, the site was hacked and brought down. Fascinating experience. Um, maybe I should be morally, you know, indignant and, and insulted and enraged, but I thought that was kind of cool. Um, you know, I worked at Apple and obviously the Apple co-founders were hacking the you know, Bell system for long distance phone calls with the blue box, right? So my heritage is to respect hackers. <laughs> so I, I thought it was very cool. I hope whoever hacked our site someday starts the next Apple and comes to garage looking for funding. Um, so I, I wasn't very, I wasn't offended at all. I, quite frankly, I was flattered. It, you know, it, at least we were worth hacking. I mean, you know, um, 36, 36 is the number of hours before Yahoo told us, why don't you go away and move Trumers away from our small business hosting service? <laughs> because at that point, our break even was basically Yahoo's monthly fee. <laughs> so Yahoo small business charges 30 bucks a month to host a website. So I thought, man, how good is this? <laughs> you know, 30 bucks a month, it's their pipe, their bandwidth, their server. How can you go wrong for 30 bucks a month? Well, that's the problem. We had so much traffic that they threw us off after 36 hours. And then 150 is what happened is now we went to an ISP, so our break even um, quintupled after 36 hours. It went from 30 bucks to 150 bucks. Now, a lot of people say, well, guy, you know, that, that also is not fair because you're not counting your time, right? You're literally counting direct out-of-pocket costs. And, you know, I understand that accounting question. Um, however, I will tell you that, you know, of all places in the world, people should understand this is Silicon Valley. And, you know, you're expected to work in your garage and spare bedroom and dorm room on side projects and entrepreneurial things. And you would never allocate opportunity costs for that, right? You, you, don't, you don't say that I'm working in my garage on a new oscilloscope, so uh, really the cost of R&D of HP's oscilloscope is two guys working in a garage for a year. That's utterly ridiculous. I mean, that's why you work in the garage, right? So, um, 
Yeah, it was 150 bucks. Today our break even is probably around $3,000 because we pay for content and we pay for photography. Um, we don't, you know, we believe in democratization. That doesn't mean we believe in ripping off um, Getty and iStock Photo and you know companies like that. So our, our monthly break even is about three thousand uh, dollars. Two refers to the number of days before Trumers was labeled the worst website ever. <laughs> now this is different. This is a very interesting headline. This is not a headline that says. Trumers is a so-so mediocre news site. This is saying the worst website ever. <laughs> ever, 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 ever. In the history of mankind, we had the worst website. And I have to tell you that it was a good day. <laughs> <laughs> because that day, we got a quarter million page views because of that. And we had Thank you, Inquirer, for doing it. It was a great day for us. I have tried to get him to revisit and call us still the world's worst website. Um, you know, you've often heard people say that there's no such thing as bad PR as long as they get the link right. Um, I subscribe to that theory. Now, I must admit, even if the Inquirer, not that they would have, but even if the Inquirer had written a story, this is the best website we've ever seen, I don't think we would have got a quarter million page views. <laughs> I think there's something about reading a, an article entitled The Worst Website Ever that just, how could you not click on that? <laughs> you know? So if any of you have blogs, please say it was the worst speech ever in Xerox Park's history. Um, 150 is the number of Google hits. If you typed in Trumers the week before we launched, it was 150 matches or hits. And if you typed in a week after, it was 315,000, or after 11 days, 315,000. I don't know how we got from 15 to 315,000. I really don't. It's, there's some mysteries of Google that just, and even today, you know, some days we do this and you get 315,000, the next day it's 100,000, the next day it's 600,000. It's, I don't, I don't know, you know, it depends on what side of the bed Larry and Sergey wake up. I don't, I don't, I really don't know. Um, and four, these are the four findings or the four conclusions I've drawn uh, having started Trumers for $12,000. Uh, the first is that the blogosphere is really full of angry people. Um, Trumers was universally panned by the blogosphere. Basically, they said it was a stupid idea, poorly implemented. Besides that, it was OK. Um, <laughs> and I have a, I have a new, newfound disrespect for the blogosphere. You know, I thought that the blogosphere were opinion leaders and early adopters who shaped the rest of public opinion. I no longer believe that. Um, I think that if the blogosphere says that you have something that's a piece of shit, it doesn't mean it'll fail. Simultaneously, if the blogosphere loves what you do, it doesn't mean you'll succeed. I basically think that the blogosphere is made up of roughly a quarter million people who are 16 years old or 50 years old. However, both groups are still living with their parents. <laughs> um, most of them have never French kissed. <laughs> a lot of them have dead cats in their refrigerators. The blogosphere is full of angry people. The blogosphere is full of people who are trying to tear down what other people try as opposed to trying themselves. Truly, I truly do believe that. So if any of you have blogs, I want you to say that I said this. <laughs> As long as you link to Trumers, I don't care what you say about me. <laughs> Second thing is, 12 grand goes a long way. Seriously, I think it would have taken a million bucks, two programmers in a year to do Trumers five years ago. Life is good, man. Open source life is good. Uh, third thing is, I learned a valuable lesson. I did not think you could do version one of any product working with a team in a foreign country or you know South Dakota. Um, I had never met the people who did this until after Trumer shipped. Never had a face-to-face -face meeting. But they really ran with it. So I, I am now, I, I have a new opinion of outsourcing and the ability to re work remotely. It can be done 3,000 miles away. And, but we were only um, 
I think it's two time zones apart, so it's not that bad. But it can be done. And the fourth thing, just to sort of summarize, is really life is good. Life is good. Uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to show you tumors now. And um, some of you may think it is stupid. Uh, frankly, I don't care. Uh, but I, I will tell you something, that, you know, forgetting whether you think it's stupid or not, the fact that you can do Web 2.0 sites for 12,000, say, say you don't have my 24 years of indebtedness, so let's say it cost you 25,000 bucks, we're still talking credit card level money, right? And um, I think, you know, as I look back at my career, both as an entrepreneur and as a venture capitalist, I wish I could tell you that I could predict that Google, Apple, Cisco, Yahoo, YouTube, and Facebook would be successful. I really wish I could tell you that, but I cannot tell you that. I, I, I'm almost willing to say that some of the stupidest ideas turned into the greatest companies. And so you know, let, me, let me just illustrate this three or four times. So first stupid idea. Uh, two guys in a garage want to build these motherboards to do these personal computers. At that time, only universities and banks had computers, but now you know, they're going to build personal computers for all of you know, 10 people who go to the homebrew computing club. Boy, that's a business I would just write a check for right away, right? OK, so that's one example. Second example. Uh, this guy thinks that he can create a perfect market, market economy so that people can sell used printers on the internet. Right? So the first thing you would ask Pierre Amadiar is, OK, Pierre, if you're the buyer of the used printer, how do you know the printer works? If you're the seller of the used printer, how do you know you're going to get paid? Besides that, there's nothing wrong with eBay. Right? <laughs> Someday people will be buying $200,000 Ferraris without ever seeing the car on eBay, right? Yeah, absolutely, Pierre, we believe. OK, so then somebody comes to you and says, well, you know, there's Ink to Me, there's Yahoo, there's Alta Vista, there's about 10 search engines. We're working at Stanford and in this professor's class, we're going to build the 12th search engine. <laughs> And what we're going to do is count links. That's going to determine how good a search uh, site is, uh, website is. So we're going to build the 12th search engine. Yeah, oh, boy, that's something I would have written a check for right on the spot, right? <laughs> and then fast forward a few more years, two guys say, well, we, we need money to have infinite servers with infinite bandwidth so people can rip off video and post it for other people to watch. <laughs> And we think that the seminal event for our company is going to be when some people drop Mentos into Diet Cokes. <laughs> you know, we, we haven't quite figured out the business model. We think maybe Coke might sponsor us. Um, certainly Mentos, you know, Mentos would like to penetrate the nerd market online. Um, OK, so right, and we don't think the motion picture industry will mind us ripping off content. And so that's YouTube, right? So I've just described four very stupid ideas. But those stupid ideas cost millions of dollars to do. So now, with 12,000 bucks and open source in MySQL, I think more people can try more stupid ideas for less money. And so I think that's going to make the world a better place. Because you can only tell something was good after the fact. I've just described to you four stupid ideas. I would dare say that if you were honest with yourself, Many of you would say, boy, I would have never written a check to Google, eBay, Yahoo, or YouTube. Because I know I wouldn't have. So um, that's the beauty. So this, I'll give you a very quick tour of Trumers. So um, basically, we allow people to post these kinds of stories with links. Um, over here is the greatest. You get into greatest by people clicking on the word interesting. So if enough people click on interesting, it pushes it up to the top. It's kind of like dig, except that um, I think dig is both basically, you know, 18-year-old nerds rating stories about, wow, there's a new version of PHP. Boy, you know, wow. Um, so, so, you know, as you can see, we cover sort of more mainstream thing, Madonna. Um, Catherine, who, I don't even know who Catherine Heigl is, supports writer strike. Um, 
So the, the way you get from just being in the body of the thing into the greatest is people vote on interesting. If, they, if, people, don't, if people hate it, they vote on dump. And if enough people vote dump, you go into the dumpster. Um, across the top, you see tabs. There's latest, greatest, TNN. TNN enables you to go straight from Twitter. How many of you use Twitter? To go straight from Twitter to the Trumers website. So you can tweet to the Trumers website. Um, then we have categories like auto business, crap. Crap is a very interesting category. Um, <laughs> Crap is an interesting category because we wanted to allow people to voice their opinion. Um, we have a very slow connection here. So crap could be several things. Let's say um, Dick Cheney says that uh, the vice presidency is not part of the executive branch. So many liberal Democrats would say, what a piece of crap that is, right? Or there could be some kind of story about how, and this recently happened, there's a, there's a house in Chicago that swears that airplanes dropped roughage, shall I say, <laughs> poop from the airplane onto their front yard. So that's crap too, right? <laughs> um, so uh, here's a story that a baby was accidentally flushed in the toilet after birth. Uh, and this, I, I don't know if this story is true, but this person was catching this train. She was nine months pregnant. She went to use the bathroom. She gave birth. She didn't realize she gave birth. The baby fell into the toilet. They got to the next station. They opened up the toilet. They rescued the baby, and the baby's doing fine now. So there's an element of crap to that. Um, so, so these are the categories. Um, you know, here's auto. And, and so what we try to do is categorize the things so you can pick your story. Um, the model for Trumers is advertising. Uh, I'll, show you, I'll show you how you post. Uh, now, uh, I, I have had to explain Trumers in many ways. And I think the way that works the best uh, is to say that what we're trying to do with Trumers is to create NPR for your eyes as opposed to your ears, OK? So you know how you, you listen to NPR, and there's a story about a 500-pound octopus that lands in Tasmania? Or then Dick Cheney says that um, you know, he, didn't, he didn't think that the vice presidency is part of the executive branch. Or that uh, a, there's a little hidden interest story on NPR about a 94-year-old woman quits driving with a spotless record in you know, Dubuque, Iowa. That's the kind of story that appears on NPR. That's the kind of story that appears at Trumers. Now, you may, be, you may be looking at me like I'm nuts and saying, well, guy, you know, what's the redeeming value? What's the critical? You know, why does Trumers exist? And um, you're going to believe I'm making this up, but I'm dead serious when I tell you this. If you read Trumers every day, you would be a more interesting person. <laughs> I, I am not kidding you. OK. So let's take some use cases. Let's say that you are a hardware designer inside Park, right? And um, you go to Match.com, and you find this hot babe that you want to date. Um, to keep calm, I'll give you the opposite case too. And so, but you, you're a hardware designer. You know, you 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 basically don't see the light of day very often. Um, soldering irons turn you on. You know, you're that kind of person, right? And so you now you got this date at Match.com, not eHarmony, because at eHarmony you fill out this psychographic profile, so you already know you're perfect for each other at eHarmony. But at Match.com you're going on physical looks, right? Let's just face it. So now you're going on this date. And you're thinking, oh, um, I found out that the date I'm going on is with someone who is, in fact, you know, a doctor. She's, you know, she's a doctor. And so what am I going to talk about on this date? So if you went to Trumers and you clicked on the health <laughs> tab, you would say, oh, there's a direct link. Did you know that in Tel Aviv? You start off your date by saying, I read this thing about in Tel Aviv. They prove that there's a link between obesity and bad breath. And then the, this other thing that you know, this scientist claimed the Great Barrier Reef is the annihilation is inevitable. And the National Institute of Health urges incontinent sufferers to speak up. <laughs> so now, now this, this 
female doctors thinking, wow, this, this is a really interesting guy. I mean, he may be a hardware designer, but he's fairly well-rounded. He, you know, <laughs> and, and then you, and it's, you know, it's near Christmas, and you say, and I just read that the University of Florida said that, you know, carbs are okay. It's not nearly as bad as you thought. And that if you took Lipitor, you would increase your hair, chances of getting a hemorrhage. And that, you know, scientists created this new kind of miraculous rubber. And this woman is thinking, wow, this is a really fascinating person. <laughs> okay, so now you're looking at me like I'm nuts, right? So now, you're, let's take the opposite case. You're a woman, and you find somebody on Match.com, and you're going to have a date with a man, right? And so you think, well, what am I going to talk to this guy about? So you click on something like the Auto tab. It's all about automobiles. And you say, you know, ah, oh, did you see that Steve Jobs has got this new Mercedes that has an iMac built into the back seat? It was the first one built in Germany. Or did you know that the most dangerous road is this location over here? Or did you know that uh, there's going to be a 50 mile per gallon VW Jetta sport wagon diesel? Or that Porsche is building a Cayenne that's a hybrid and gets 40 miles per gallon? And, and this man is going to think, wow, this woman really knows her cars. She's really interesting. And then if you really wanted to pour it on, you know, you could click on sports, and then you could dis the woman could discuss sports with the man. You're looking at me like I'm nuts. I realize that, but I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you, if you read Trumers before you went to a cocktail party, you will have more to talk about. <laughs> I, I absolutely, positively can make that guarantee. You will be a more interesting person. So, um, well, <laughs> so I'll show you how you post the Trumer. Um, we have gone from an unmoderated website to a moderated one. And the reason why is that we have we have noticed that the, trumer, the people who send us trumers, they're getting to be such high quality that, um, in fact, we want to weed out even the very rare lousy trumer. We want to, you know, it, it would be it would be weird if every once in a while at NPR you heard pornography, right? So this is the same thing. We have such a high standard now that we, we're we're moderating it. So basically, you go here and you type a headline like "Guy is." trying to find something to copy from Park. <laughs> he saw all the labs today and took pictures. <laughs> this is uh, Apple II. <laughs> and it's the tech category. And you click on Submit. And because I am known through the system of cookies that I am a Trumer, so obviously I'm the co-founder, you know, it, it will immediately be posted. And, and then what happens, um, we have Trumeress who write stories like this, or even better. Uh, and we also have what we call Trumerazi. And what Trumerazi do is we have these people who are photo editors, and they uh, constantly lurk at Trumers. And as soon as we go to the page, um, they constantly lurk at Trumers. And then when they see a story that doesn't have a picture, they go and find a picture from either Wikipedia, Wikimedia, or iStock Photo. Or if it's linked to a CNN story, we grab the thumbnail that CNN used. Okay? So um, if we were to leave this story here, guy is trying to find something to copy from Park. Within a couple hours, there would be a picture of your logo or something like that, because a Trumerazi would add it for me. So if you're a Trumerist, you don't have to put the picture. So someone put a picture of Britney Spears here. Someone put a picture of Katie. Um, down here, it's not counterfeit color added to US $5 bill. You know, a Trumerazi found the picture of the $5 bill. Um, judge calls rape victim stupid and naive. We got a picture of a gavel from iStock photo. So Trumarazis add pictures. Trumares write the story. And so, um, you know, tonight if you're married to a lawyer, you can say, well, this Canadian judge called the victim of sexual assault naive and stupid. Can you believe the insensitivity of the Canadian judicial system, eh? 
Um, so, so uh, you know, that's Drewers. That's Drewers. And I'm just having a blast with it. We get about eight or 10,000 visitors a day. Uh, that's not exactly a business yet. On the other hand, it only cost me 25 grand, right? So he, I'll contrast Trumers to a, a typical kind of startup. Um, what happens in a typical startup is you raise a couple million dollars, right? And in order to raise that couple million dollars, you have to build a team of you know, five people. And in order to look like you're an interesting company, you have to tell your venture capitalists that uh, you'll ship in six months, and conservatively speaking, after the first month, you'll have a million uh, registered users. Well, lo and behold, you ship in 12 months, not six months. In the 13th month, instead of a million users, you have 10,000. So, you know, you're only off by 990,000. Um, and, but however, you know, your million users was a conservative estimate. And um, because it was a conservative estimate, even though you're late, but the later you got, the more robust and more interesting your, your software got. So you figured, well, we really do need probably to, you know, we need to support 500 simultaneous connections. We probably need 20 network appliance servers. We should also colo our company because uh, we're we're going to be so mission critical for a million users that God help us if there's an earthquake in Silicon Valley. So we, we need to put one in Napa. Probably should put one in Shanghai so the latency isn't you know long for the far eastern market. Probably put one in the UK or um, France or Spain for their latency. So now we have three locations, three IT managers, three IT support staff. Um, to support our million uh, registered users conservatively in the 13th month, 500 simultaneous connections. So you throw your party and nobody comes, right? So now you have 10,000 uh, registered users instead of a million. Your overhead is quarter million dollars a month because now you have these three IT staffs, you have tech support, you have customer service, you have all these people, the infrastructure you're building in to support your conservative estimate quarter million bucks a month, you raise two million bucks, guess what, you have eight months of burn rate, you're running, you know, running low already, now you have to go back to the VCs and say, well, trust us, version 1.1 will really be the one. And so float us another two million bucks, this is all the money we'll ever have to raise, we'll get to profitability. Um, we've had great discussions with Coke, they want to sponsor the Diet Coke Mentos videos. Um, and, and, you know, basically, you just get your head handed to you. Maybe they write you another check. Probably they don't. Um, you have to take your burn rate from a quarter million dollars a month to 10,000 a month, what it should have been all the way along. Now, by contrast, Trumers started, I've spent probably $25,000 so far. As I said, our overhead is about $3,000 a month. Um, when I when I need to raise capital to run Trumers some more, basically I just make another paid speech. Um, and life is good. And you know, if a year from now, if it's still getting only 10 or 15 or 20,000 visitors a, a day, I'll just shut it down. I'll write this great blog entry about it, about all the things I learned. 3,000 people living with their moms will say, guy, you were so stupid. I knew you were so stupid. They'll, they'll have a field day. They will lynch me. They'll say, there'll be a small minority will, that will say, well, at least he tried. He proved that you could at least launch a company. It was an interesting experiment. He failed, but he's got more balls than you. All you do is stay at home with your mom. And you know, <laughs> right? You, you're still sleeping on your Buzz Lightyear sheets. Um, and so it'll be the, you know, the world's most interesting blog entry the day I close it. Or I will, I, will, I will post a picture of me holding a $500,000 check from Google for AdSense advertising. And I'll flip off the entire blogosphere. That's the only, you know, this is the one of, this is the only two consequences that's going to happen. I'm going to either tell everybody to go stick it, or I'm going to say, guess what, I failed. That's the only two things. And, um, you know, the order of magnitude is twenty-five dollars to $50,000. Now, you know, that's not loose change, but it's not 
two million dollars. I don't spend. You don't have to spend two million bucks to do stupid things anymore. You can spend twenty-five. <laughs> Life is good. Life is good. So that is Trumers. Um, I hope you will consider it as NPR for your eyes. Please do check it out. I mean, I really. I, I promise you, it'll make you a more interesting person. Maybe, maybe all of you are already interesting enough, but really, um, <laughs> it'll make you more interesting. And um, you know, if any of you have kids, and you know how kids have to go every once in a while to school and they have to share something. Well, man, my kids have the best stories. <laughs> my kids will eat your kids for lunch at sharing. So that's another good use for it. So, do you have any questions? Thank you. <laughs> yes? What's your advertising uh, revenue coming in? Our right? advertising revenue is pretty abysmal right now. Um, you know, we sell these two ads. There's a banner here. Well, there's not even a banner ad right now. And we sell these ads. Um, we're, list we're, we're handled or we're repped by Federated Media. Um, the, the stated rate is $20 CPM, which is very high, but it's $20 CPM. And we get it when we can, and we don't get it when we can't. Um, the problem with Trumers as it's currently configured is that Google, in particular, has a hard time with our home page. Because if you look at our home page, you know, there's so many different kinds of stories that Google doesn't know whether they should sell you Britney Spears concert tickets or Katie Holmes Tom Cruise movie tickets, or DC Metro, I don't know, discount passes, or burn body fell from airplane, you know, United Airlines <laughs> insurance policy, or Eva Longoria, Tony Parker, deny accusations of infidelity. So, you know, I don't know, gift certificate to uh, marriage counseling. Um, <laughs> Uh, Tel Aviv University obesity, you know, Dr. Atkins' book from Amazon. There's so many different topics at the Trumers homepage that Google AdSense just goes, wow, you know, we punt. So um, the next version of Trumers, the homepage is only going to have the headline. Okay? So you won't, you won't, you'll only see stolen laptop with patient's info. You will not see this part. So we're going to have more headlines. So once you have more headlines, we're going to have more stories because we're only going to show headlines. When you click on the headline, then you go to the story. Now when you're on the stories page, guess what? That page is only about one thing. So now Google can say, oh, so stolen laptop with patient's info. You click on it. You go to the story itself. Now Google AdSense can say, oh, Here's how you can buy laptop insurance, right? Here's how you can buy Norton, you know, utilities. Here's how you can buy um, a new MacBook since your Dell was stolen. Um, but now it gets very specific to a particular topic. So we believe that our search and our advertising revenue will be very different because now people will be viewing pages specifically. The only reason to go to this page now is to comment, right? Bef when we switch to this format, you have to go to this page to read the paragraph. So just like that, we may in fact kind of double our page views, right? Because you only could read headlines. In a few weeks, you'll only be able to read headlines. If you want to read the story, you have to click through. So that's one more page view. Whereas right now, you just read the headline. And in fact, you can read a whole bunch of headlines on the home page without clicking. So when you're on the home page, you can read about, I think, I don't know, 10 or 11 stories with one click. If you were to read all 10 or 11 stories in the new version, it's 10 clicks. So it's, you know, it's twice. It's, it's actually 10x the page views. So hopefully advertising will pick up. But at, at eight or 10,000 visitors a day, it's not enough volume to be an advertising play yet. You really need, you probably need a quarter million a day, you know, something like that. That's where it starts to get. That's where I can start not having to make speeches. <laughs> yes? Um, you mentioned that uh, you told how you paid 5000 oh, actually less, 4500 for the coding. But it wasn't clear. You said you'd pay a lot more if you went to a legal firm to get your legal fees done. But you know, how did you do it? 
How did you get the legal fees, all that work, uh, the trademark and libel and shareholder stuff for 4800 How? Yeah. 24 years of helping people. So it was calling a favor? A lot of people owe me favors. Okay. I've done a lot of favors. And, you know, and a lot of people, listen, I, it's, you know, I'll be honest, it's not fair, okay? If, if two guys in a garage walked into that law firm and asked for that work, it would have been 15000 I know that, right? It's not fair. On the other hand, I help the guy, right? So it is fair. And, and I, I think, you know, one thing I want to dissuade entrepreneurs from is some people believe very naively that entrepreneurship <coughs> is about a, a level playing field, right? It's bullshit. Entrepreneurship is about tilting the field to you <laughs> and whatever it takes. So if you happen to have done this lawyer a favor and he'll do you a favor and incorporate you for two-thirds discount, <laughs> You know, take it. And if, Does if, I'm sorry? Does he charge stock equity? Uh, there's no equity involved. It was, there's only three shareholders of, of the company right now. Uh, and so, you know, similarly, you, you know, if, if Michael Arrington of TechCrunch calls you up and says, would you moderate a panel for me? You say yes. And you know why you say yes? Because when you launch Trumers, you want to call up Michael Arrington and say, hey, you've got to cover me. <laughs> That's how it works. And so, wh whereas if you don't have that connection, you'd have to pay Trixie or Biff at some PR firm 10,000 bucks a month to suck up to Michael Arrington for you. Well, I didn't have to pay that arbitrage. You know, I did the sucking up myself. <laughs> um, so the, the field is not level for me, but that's the point. It's to make it not level, not to level it. This ain't the EEOC, baby. This is how you win. This is not how you, you know, get elected. Um, what else? Yes. Can you estimate the uh, total value of all the favors you cash in and do the business? <laughs> well, if I estimate the total value of my favors, assuming it's not, you know, what, it's assuming it's not going to affect my tax return, <laughs> maybe it would be hundreds of thousands of dollars, I think. Um, but I, I don't want you to get the idea that I'm this manipulative kind of person, <laughs> even though it's probably too late. Uh, it's just, you know, I really believe in karma, and I really believe in paying things forward. And when I did these favors, you know, you know, there, there's different kinds of people in the world. I am predisposed to say yes. Whenever people ask me for the help, I say yes. And that has served me very well. Now, this doesn't mean every, all 300 of you got to ask me to review your PowerPoint, right? Because <laughs> I will say no. But generally speaking, it's been my experience in life that when you say yes and you help people, and especially when you help people who have no seeming way to help you back, which is the purest form, uh, the, the best word to describe this is mensch, M-E-N-S-C-H, right? So you want to be a mensch. And a mensch does things for people. You know, a mensch, it, OK, anybody with reasonable intellig intelligence will do a favor for Michael Arrington, right? Because someday you need Michael Arrington. Or you will do a favor for Walt Mossberg because he writes that column in the Wall Street Journal. Well, duh, you need to suck up to Arrington and Mossberg, right? That's not a mensch. That's just being smart. But a mensch would help someone who, secretary, administrative aide, you know, reservationist, flight attendant, <coughs> bell captain, you know, waiter, waitress. That's a mensch because that person can't necessarily do anything big for you. But it's the pure joy of helping people. I have, I, get, I receive great joy from helping people. I also receive great joy from calling in favors. But um, so it's just, and I, I, I really seriously do believe that, you know, God is up there and he's keeping score. <laughs> right? And you, you can be net positive or net negative. And I just want to be net positive. Now, this, this, we're going to go into a whole theological thing. Now, I realize you don't get into heaven by being a good guy. You get into heaven by accepting Christ, right? So let's just say you accept Christ and you get into heaven. But what happens if you get to heaven and you find out, my God, it's like, it's a 747. There's coach in heaven, business class in heaven, and first class in heaven. You know, so just in case, I mean, we're talking eternity here. We're not talking just a six-hour flight. 
Why not help people? Why not help people? That's my attitude. Yes? What stops uh, somebody else from doing the same thing? Again? Nothing. Nothing stops people. Well, in, in my case, with Trumers in particular, I'll tell you what stops people from doing the same thing. The entire blogosphere said it's stupid. <laughs> right? So you'd have to be a really stupid person to do something that everybody thinks is stupid. That's a great defensibility. <laughs> if everybody said this were smart, there'd be all kinds of clones right now. But everybody thinks it's stupid. So I figure I, you know, from the time that I, if I ever do, prove it's successful to the time it's cloned, well, it's at least seven and a half weeks, right? Um, but you know, right now, you'd have to really be stupid to copy a stupid idea. So I, the blogger's fear has just erected this great line of defensibility to me. They did a great favor to me. But the honest truth is, but there's nothing to stop you from cloning eBay. There's nothing to stop you from cloning YouTube, right? I mean, I, as a venture capitalist, I'll tell you that there's very few things that are truly defensible. The, the, when a venture capitalist asks you what makes your, your product defensible, it's a trick question. Really, it's a trick question. You fail the test if you say patents, honestly. Because if you say patents, it means you think that you have the time and money to out-litigate Microsoft. And you don't. And no venture capitalist is going to give you 10 million bucks to litigate Microsoft right now. If you're Xerox Park and you can, you know, you have general counsel and all that, all right, fine, God bless you, patents, you know, and out litigate them and all that. But generally speaking, it's not patents. So if a venture capitalist ever asks you what makes you defensible, the honest answer, the most shocking answer, and probably the most effective answer is you say nothing. We're going to just implement better and just go for it. That's the honest answer. You may not have the courage to re say that honest answer, but that is the honest answer. And if nothing else, the VC will say, this person understands how the world works. If you say nothing prevents us, we're, gonna, you know, we're only going to raise x million dollars, we are not going to spend that money in litigation. We don't have the time, we don't have the money to litigate. We're going to file the patents because someday if a large company buys us, part of the reason why they buy a small company is to get the patents because when a large company buys a small company and gets patents, it can litigate against Microsoft, but not two guys in a garage. So the answer is probably nothing. Yes? Have you thought about putting Trumers in an RSS feed so that people would see these headlines? Oh, hey, Trumers is an RSS feed. Um, you just click over here and you subscribe. You can subscribe to, you know, this will give you everything. Or if you go to any particular tab, if you only care about trumers that have to do with sex, you click on the sex tab and then there's a sex RSS feed. Yes? How would you differentiate yourself from, say, Google News? Um, Google News, I, I think the, 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 See, why men are different from women when shopping? Now, is that not great date material? <laughs> what woman would not be impressed if you talked about this? OK, so uh, what was the question again? Um, <laughs> Aria, I'm having a senior moment. What was the question? Google News. Google News. Oh, I think Google News, Google News wants completeness, right? They want to say that they found every story that day you know, very quickly. We have 25 stories a day. We have Trumerous, and they're looking for stories. Just, the, I guess the difference would be, would you go to, you go to Google News to find out all the news, right? You go to NPR.org to find the most interesting news. That's the difference. We want to be like NPR.org, not Google News. Different reason. Yes? Imagine you're not smart enough to have such a stupid idea. Yeah. And life is good because the cost of trying to do business has decreased hundredfold. So yeah. Now you probably have at least hundred times more people trying to do the exact same small idea that you're trying to do. How do you go about that? Um, I, are you complaining? I mean, <laughs> I mean the, bad, you know, the bad news is yes, more people can try the same stupid idea. Um, but I would say the net positive is that now you can try the net stupid idea too. So I, I think all in all, it's good. I mean, I, it, would, it would be an awful world if you could only try stupid things if you had $2 million. You know, that's just like, that's just anti-American. I mean, 
it's, it's good. I mean, yes. Yeah, and I, I, re I have to catch an airplane is the problem. Yes. So, um, everybody, when they set out to do an adventure, they have a bottom card as to when they decide um, that you reach a successful point. Because, you know, yeah. you get uh, offers, sometimes they're not quite what you want. Yeah. You, know, you always have to set a point where you go and say, this is good enough. I've made my success. I'm getting out. Okay. Okay, for an exit. What's mine? Yeah. Well, um, I would declare Trumers a success if I could sell a million dollars of advertising a year, right? Because at a million dollars, what would happen is my partner would take 400, I would take 400, and we'd spend 100 on everything else and 100 for another you know, smaller partner. So 100 for her, 400 for him, 400 for me. I don't have to get on an airplane as often. I can play more hockey. You know, life is good. That's all I got. You know, I'm trying to live in 400 grand a year. Okay? So, you know, I mean, it's not, I don't, I don't I, I, you know, that's what Larry Ellison has in his ashtray, right? So, <laughs> Yeah, and, and you know, that's his maid's ashtray. Um, so, now the beauty for me is, let's say I have 25,000 into Trumers right now. Let's say somebody comes up to me and says, Guy, I'll buy it for you for 50 grand. <laughs> I doubled my money. <laughs> How do you like that, right? So, you know, well, when you, when you have the world's worst website ever, <laughs> if you sell it for anything north of what you paid to make it, you, you got to declare victory. <laughs> right? So, so <laughs> now, you know, um, I know it's, it's I, what I'm about to do now is very poor protocol. You know, I should hang around, I should be sociable, I should talk to you and all that. And, you know, I'm sure some of you have individual questions for me, but honestly, Honestly, I have to catch a plane tonight. I really have to get to the airport. I'm going to Calgary. Anybody from Calgary in here? I'm going to Calgary to play hockey. I really need to catch a plane. And um, so I, I am, I'm going to be rude. And I know I'm telling you all this, but still, you know, five of you are going to come up to me and say, Guy, could you just, can I just talk to you for a second anyway? And I, I'm going to, I'm going to blow you off, really. I, I, I really, I really, really, you're going to, right? I really have to go, okay? <laughs> Thank you very much.